I'm in Iceland, where I've faced 50 mile an hour storms and a hair raising descent from a glacier. Now I'm in a deadly cauldron of geothermic activity. And if you're in any doubt whether it's boiling water, check that out. If you had any food, you could actually cook it in that. At least it's nice and warm. Just feel that heat. The water spewed out here is rich in minerals, which form a thin and brittle crust. So I need to pick my way through carefully to avoid becoming a boil in the bag there. This is no place to hang about. There's no food, shelter or drinking water. Your best bet is to get to lower ground and ultimately the coast. <laughs> So you see a river at the bottom of the valley here. Yeah, a nice little place, your river is going to lead you to the coast. Let's get down. As I approach the valley bottom, the grass becomes visible. The geothermal heat from the volcano has melted most of the snow. The earth may be warmer, but the air is still bitingly cold, and hypothermia is a real threat. As you get colder, the brain is forced to work below optimum temperature. It's just this continual cold wind and drizzle. And it's pretty draining, to be honest. Your ability to make good decisions suffers. In extreme cases, hypothermia can lead to coma and ultimately death. Look, you see the bubbles coming up there. So that's boiling, but this bit is glacial and freezing. It sounds a bit crazy, but I'm just wondering whether I might be able to divert some of the cold water into here, dig it out a bit, and create natural, kind of hot tub, really. Even the effort of building this hot tub is warming me up. I love things like this, just because I can see this is going to totally work. All I've got to do is plug a few of these leaks with some moss, create a bit of an outflow this end. So I've got water running in and running out. And that now, it's a really nice bath temperature. And show me a man who doesn't like a hot bath when they're cold and wet. OK, let's do this. Right, into nature's hot tub. Start off here where it's cold, as I edge forward. This is actually, in a way, too cold. So what I can do is down this, back up again, stop that outflow. And then this is going to build up. And oh, yeah, wow, that bit's really hot. Yeah, and now that's plugged again. I can just feel this bit getting nice and warm. Ah, as long as you don't sit on the boiling hot vent. Ah, oh, man. That is absolute heaven. People have often died because they've failed to spot the onset of hypothermia. It's getting a little hotter getting up. It's safe to say now I'm well out of danger. I love the fact I can just adjust the temperature by letting a bit of flow of cold water back in. And you could just completely sit out a storm like this. You know, it could be minus 40 out there. The only person that's going to be all right is old Muggins in here. Rewarmed and rejuvenated. And that's why most of the battle for survival is one up here. Think smart and keep your morale up. That natural bath worked well. I think if you can get your body warm, and then keep moving, you've got a fighting chance of keeping the cold away. 
There's nothing geothermic about this area. Got snow on the ground. You know, back up there, you've got the geothermal heat from the ground to melt the snow. Definitely colder here. And the wind down the valley. Try and keep the pace up, keep moving. Oh, you're going to love this. Come on, check this out. So it's really deep, this cave. There's good natural protection from the weather in here. It's about the only dry thing I've seen all day. Now, this would be great. It's all silver birch. You get the bark off this, literally just peel it off. And the great thing about birch bark is it's got so many oils packed into it. It'll take a spark even when it's soaking wet. Come on, take. There we go. It's amazing. As soon as you see that flame, instantly feel better. Now to sort out my feet. If left untreated, fungal infections like trench foot can lead to gangrene and amputation. Drying them out is a priority. Look, everything's starting to steam. It's a good sign. Nothing beats a good fire. It's not long before I'm warmed through, dried off, and got a brew going. <laughs> Look, having a pee, I saw a worm. It's coming to the surface. I reckon if there's one, there's going to be more. I'm going to find a load of worms, and that is going to be supper. OK. It's wet weather and pee. It's going to help bring them to the surface. Another one. That'll do. Let's get them cooked. Boil those up, and that will get rid of any bacteria that's inside them. Always a good thing to do. It's kind of one of those ones you don't know whether to have them one at a time and savour them, or to have them all munched together. I think we'll go one at a time. The only thing going for them is they're warm and nutritious. But they suck when it comes to taste. <laughs>